Uh, Mukun Tatai uh, obtained a BA in physics from Cornell University and then a PhD in physics again from the, from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology uh, in Boston in 2004. Since then, he has been a faculty at NCBS and is now coordinator of the Simon Center for the Study of Living Machines. Uh, Mukun's previous work has shown how genes interact to create cellular memory and how uh, randomness influences cell function and evolution. He is currently studying the two billion year old origins of complex eukaryotic cells and will, as I said, tell you about the evolution of the culture of theory in, in our institute. Great. So um, it's a privilege to be able to speak uh, in this seminar series. And I, I think it's also a really wonderful idea to have uh, these science culture talks because they really give you an impression of how things work behind the scenes uh, and how all these wonderful institutions came to be uh, the way we see them now. Um, so at uh, NCBS, where Madan uh, Jitu and I work, uh, one of the most fun times of year for me uh, is what we call the monsoon school, which happens every June or July. Um, at this time, uh, 40 undergraduate students, male and female, uh, from institutions across the country descend uh, on our campus. And it's always fun to have an injection of undergrads in otherwise graduate level campus. And uh, the important thing is that most of these students uh, are not biology majors, but they come from backgrounds of physics, chemistry, engineering, computer science, mathematics, and sometimes medicine. And what happens is that for 10 days, uh, they're exposed to uh, pedagogical lectures on mathematical tools like dynamical systems or graph theory or game theory. Um, and then in the evenings, uh, they're exposed to research talks by colleagues uh, at NCBS and from institutions across uh, India, um, which really showcase the cutting edge applications of these tools in hard biology problems. And um, what happens, uh, and we've seen this year on year, we've been running this, this is the eighth year now, the alumni of the school, they go on, they, they get completely converted, right? But biology becomes fun for them. And uh, they've gone on to PhD programs and postdoctoral programs uh, around the world, uh, and they connect physics and, and biology in a very meaningful way. Um, so the reason I bring this up is I want to explain why NCBS has become a hub for this kind of activity. So it's not just our pedagogical activities uh, with things like the Monsoon School, but really the research that happens at NCBS, and you just saw a wonderful talk by Madan giving an example, um, really showcases the engagement with, between different disciplines. And uh, it's not an easy thing to set something like this up. So I'm going to tell uh, the story, the unlikely seeds of theory uh, on a life sciences campus. So uh, the NCBS is actually part of a larger institution called the Tata Institute for Fundamental Research, which is celebrating its 75th year this year. It was set up in 1945 by cosmic ray physicist Homi Bhabha. And Bhabha sets up uh, TIFR, or the Tata Institute as it's called, uh, as a sort of temple of theoretical and experimental physics. Um, and uh, uh, this uh, institution uh, runs in this physics mode for, for many, many years uh, from its founding. But there's an interesting quote from Baba uh, where he says here, um, and I write here, as early as uh, 1944, uh, A.B. Hill, who was a, a Nobel Prize winner, um, has written to me, he says, suggesting that biophysics was a neglected subject in India and so Baba has this idea of biophysics in his mind, but he doesn't take action on this little nugget until 1962, where he says, my attention was drawn by Leo Zillard, who you heard uh, from, about from Madan's talk, to a very promising Indian molecular biologist. Zillard, if you recall, of course, was a physicist, was uh, deeply influential in the US atomic energy uh, program, but after the war, he switches over to biology. And uh, so he's in a very good position to advise somebody like Baba on how to nucleate a biology activity within an otherwise uh, physics heavy uh, campus. So this is a, an image of the new, then new campus of uh, the Tata Institute in uh, Bombay uh, in around 1962. So that promising Indian molecular biologist is this uh, young uh, gentleman on the left, Obeid Siddiqui, who at the time was uh, actively working on fundamental aspects of the genetic code at Cold Spring Harbor, another sister institute of this seminar series. And uh, uh, Obeid is invited to move back to Bombay, and he does. Um, so he lands up at TIFR and sets up the molecular biology unit. So I think this is a, the first unlikely step here is the nucleation of a biology uh, enterprise, the molecular biology unit, within a physics-heavy um, atmosphere. Uh, and the molecular biology unit goes on uh, to, uh, with great success in its activities uh, in, in Bombay. 
Um, so uh, zoom forward a couple of decades. Um, in 1983, Obed Siddiqui and another colleague at TIFR, Vidya Nanjundaya, uh, put together a proposal in what's called the five-year plan. So India used to operate in these five-year plans for expanding institutions and planning uh, governmental allocations. So in this five-year plan, uh, from which I show uh, these, uh, these excerpts from the original documents, um, Nanjundaya and Siddiqui uh, actually take a view that there is room for biology to grow uh, beyond uh, the, the set of activities happening at the, at the MBU. And they write here, modern biology is highly interdisciplinary, it requires close interactions between a number of fields, including physics, chemistry, engineering, and mathematics. It's not to say that that activity was not already going on at TIFR. So for example, uh, the work of UN Singh, who was at TIFR at the time, on uh, the evolution of a spatio-temporal order leading to the emergence of a primeval cell is a sort of glimpse of early theoretical biology, right? But this effort doesn't actually grow and nucleate within that broader TFR uh, environment. Uh, I think uh, UN Singh's work is interesting for me personally because uh, among other things, he was interested in the prokaryotic to eukaryotic transition, uh, which happens to be uh, the discipline which I spend my time thinking about today, many decades later, right? So some problems never go out of style. Which is nice. Uh, but uh, so this, uh, this plan gets put forward. And the, the output of that plan is, in fact, the founding of a new campus of the TIFR, but not in Bombay, but in Bangalore, which is where we are. The NCBS is founded as a center of TIFR. Uh, this image is an image of NCBS as it is now, not as it was then. Then it was a single building uh, within the Indian Institute of Science campus. So uh, 1992, very early uh, days of NCBS, at one of the faculty meetings, Obeyed uh, Siddiqui sketches out on a whiteboard, and here's a sort of low res uh, photograph that uh, we have of that uh, discussion. Sketches out on a whiteboard his vision for uh, where NCBS is going to go. And he writes on top here possible areas of NCBS. And these circled bubbles are areas where he has already members of the faculty working. They include structural biology, immunology, neurogenetics, molecular neurobiology, right? Disciplines that Obeyed is very familiar with because he works within those fields. Um, and already has people working there at NCBS. But then he writes in the rightmost column here, possible areas. And then he writes behavior, environment and ecology, and theoretical biology. Um, and I should say that now in 2020, we actually have groups that work in all these areas. But I think it's rather amazing that from 1992, uh, Obeid looks around at the vast span of biology and he says these disciplines would take root in the institute that has just been founded in 1991. And it really shows uh, how uh, good a grasp he had of the connection of different aspects of biology. So the interesting thing about NCBS, of course, is that it was an experimental institution, but theory grows now as a nugget of an idea within that experimental soil. Um, other uh, aspects of these ideas is, are floating around at the time. Uh, that the TIFR is reviewed uh, in 1997 by Lord Porter. The document that was produced from that is called the Porter Report. Uh, and uh, this is an image of a page from that report I show on the left. Sidney Brenner was one of the members of the committee who reviewed TIFR at the time. Sidney Brenner was a good friend of Obeid's. And uh, Sidney Brenner writes the uh, biology component of that review. And uh, I'm going to read some excerpts from that. So Brenner writes in this report, I believe the entry of young physicists and mathematicians and computer scientists is exactly what biology needs now and will continue to need in the future echoing very much that idea uh, of interdisciplinary biology in Obeid's own proposal in the five-year plan. Interestingly, Obeid got hold of this report and he, he ticks uh, and underlines some sentences. This is actually his handwriting. And right at the bottom, he writes, it is more likely above can be done in Bangalore and not in Bombay. So this is an interesting point. And Bombay already has physicists, right? It already has this ecosystem in which biology is operating. Uh, but yet Obey feels that it's better to have this new institution within which uh, this interdisciplinary engagement grows from scratch. Um, so this was uh, something which uh, it could have gone either way and it could have started in Bombay, but it ends up starting in Bangalore. Uh, I had uh, the privilege of uh, watching a discussion between Obeid Siddiqui and Sidney Brenner in 2012, and that's where this photograph is taken. Um, this is me on the left. This is uh, Madan um, Rao. Sandeep Krishna, another colleague from NCBS, and Spenta Wadia at the International Center for Theoretical Sciences, another institute in Bangalore. So the ICTS was holding a discussion meeting on the role of theory in biology. And uh, Sidney Brenner was uh, uh, giving a series of lectures there. And at the tea break, we got to glimpse Obeid and Sidney 
um, you know, both died in the wool hardcore biologists, right? Talking about their opinion of the role of theory in biology. And Sidney Brenner says something which uh, sticks with me, and he said it many other occasions. There is no theoretical biology, there is only biology, right? So, so he has this view of a unified biology. And yet, both Obeid and Sidney Brenner have a very nuanced understanding of the role theory can play. Uh, and you can see the rest of us are just watching this discussion, and it's just amazing experience. So what happens then is that this nugget is then taken forward officially. If you look at the minutes of the faculty meeting starting around 1999, just a couple of years later, by then Obey the step down and Vijay Raghavan here has taken over as the director of NCBS. You see Jitu Mayer, who's the present director, who introduced this uh, talk right at the beginning, Madan Rao here. Uh, Shiv Shankar, who's the biophysicist being recruited to NCBS at the time. So a proposal is made by Shiva and Madan and Jitu uh, to increase the collaboration between the different institutions of Bangalore that represent different disciplines, including the Raman Research Institute, which is where Madan was working at the time, the Indian Institute of Science. Um, and so this is then named the Physics and Biology uh, Initiative, right? And remember again, these are experimentalists who are deciding to start to collaborate with the theorist Madan, who's at another institution down the road. Um, this is actually the milieu uh, at the time in which I started to visit NCBS around 2000, 2001. I was visiting Shiva's lab uh, on and off. Um, and uh, uh, it, it was just obviously an exciting place to be. I mean, the fact that there were no boundaries, the fact that the experimentalists were so interested uh, and understood the importance of theory. And uh, it, so I actually joined NCBS in 2004 because it was clear to me this is the kind of place where I, I wanted to work. So I'm going to jump forward many years from then, um, given uh, the restrictions of time here. I could tell you many things that happened between 2004 and today. One of the important things I'd like to highlight is that over the course of time, uh, we recruited several other colleagues who uh, represented theory, computation, and different aspects of uh, interdisciplinary engagement to NCBS. So we had a nucleus of people working in this area. And, and this became in some sense formalized in 2013 when NCBS entered into a collaboration with the Simons Foundation. The Simons Foundation's goal is to, is to support the engagement between mathematics and other scientific disciplines. And so in this collaboration, we set up the Simons Center for the Study of Living Machines, uh, this name that we, we had a lot of fun uh, thinking up, the Center for the Study of Living Machines at NCBS. And so the Simons Center, uh, in some sense, uh, it's not just the collection of theorists who are working on our campus, uh, but in fact, it, is, uh, it allows us to have a, a really amazing program of discussion meetings and seminars and colloquia. Uh, it funds the monsoon school and other pedagogical schools that we run. A constant stream of visitors from around India and internationally, uh, which of course has a temporary, uh, temporarily stopped, but will soon start up again. Uh, and a postdoctoral program, um, which brought people like, uh, like Richard and Alex mentioned in Madan's talk uh, to NCBS before they went on to their own faculty positions elsewhere. So, so what the Simon Center uh, within NCBS allows us to do is to punch above our weight. NCBS is not such a large institution, but we become a hub uh, for having this kind of collaborative activity with other institutions in Bangalore, in India, and across the world. Um, and I think it really energizes um, uh, the way work is done within the campus. So uh, if that was the end of the story, I think I wouldn't be telling the story here. I mean, if we just had a bunch of theorists and they retreated into their shell, and became theorists, theorists, theorists only talk to other theorists, um, then I think this activity would have just shriveled up. But something different and amazing happens. And I think the credit for this goes all the way back to Obeid with his vision of a unified biology and of theory taking root within an experimental soil. And that amazing thing that happens is the vanishing of boundaries. This is a graph, uh, which I like very much. Every node is a member of the faculty present or past at NCBS. Uh, all the red edges represent co-authorships uh, in publications or preprints. The people outlined in solid red uh, have primarily theory or computation uh, programs, research programs, and the people outlined in dashed red have a heavy computational component um, uh, to their experimental uh, laboratories. And I defy anybody to find any clusters or cliques within this collaboration graph. Right? So although NCBS has disciplines all the way from molecular structure through neuroscience or development to ecology, um, none of that uh, siloing appears within the campus represented in the graph this way. And I'll put it to you, I feel very strongly uh, that one of the reasons for this is that theory in some sense binds the whole enterprise together. Um, and the theory experiment collaborations that have happened over the past several years cover all aspects of the work at NCBS. 
right? From genomics and proteomics to active matter in cells, metabolic regulation, neuroscience, or, uh, or evolution. Um, so this is the reason why I think NCBS has managed to survive as a unified entity, even though it covers the entire spread of modern biology from single molecules to ecosystems. This is a little slide I prepared for our 25th anniversary, which happened over five years ago, where I took all the words and all the abstracts published at NCBS in these five-year intervals. Uh, and these words, for the first time they appeared, they're represented in different colors. All the words that first appeared in the first five-year period are in orange, the next five-year period in purple, and so on, all the way up to red. And so you can see what happens, that these disciplines represented by these words are nucleated, and they continue to grow as new disciplines are nucleated, and they broaden the spectrum of work at NCBS. So I'll end with this final slide. Um, this graphic, uh, which was uh, uh, commissioned by uh, a designer, Anupa John, for the Simon Center, I like very much. On the left, you see this little guy, that's a logo turtle. For those of you who remember the programming language logo, you could tell this little turtle to go forward, right, 30 degrees rotate, and so on and so forth. Um, these sort of fundamental molecular level instructions then can be built up into models of how motors work, membranes work, like Madan spoke about, eventually into the level of cells, tissues, the entire organism, and the whole ecosystem, right? And so the, the fundamental defining feature of biology is this idea that it spans across all these scales. People usually think physics is constrained by theory, but biology is much more so. Not only are there constraints from the bottom, for example, the rules of active matter that Madan discussed, but also constraints from the top, the theory of evolution. And biology exists in the space allowed by these two constricting forces. But theory, of course, is not just constraining, it is enabling. Theory enables the generalization across different scales. Theory is not math. Theory is anybody who says, here's how a molecule works, here's the implication for an organism. In that sense, all biologists are theorists, and I think this exemplifies why NCBS is such a fun place to be. So I'll stop with that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Makund. That was a super fascinating um, presentation. Um, before we get started with the questions, I do want to call out to everybody that Makund actually initiated the discussion on Slack already by putting in a little bit of food for thought. Um, so after the seminar, you can click on the link in the chat box and head over to Slack and continue the discussion. Um, so uh, Makund, I want to say that um, I really love that um, whiteboard notes and casual conversations were were captured at the time that they were happening. I think this really brings um, the history to life, which is super cool. Um, I also think that, um, you know, you telling us that um, uh, NCBS and the Simon Center really covers the spectrum of molecules to ecosystems is very, uh, was, was really exemplified by um, the two talks we've had from NCBS so far with Uma Ramakrishnan talking about conservation ecology and then of course Madan's talk today. So, so that was, um, that was very, very sort of um, great to hear. Um, so I want to- In fact, uh, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. I forgot to acknowledge right at the beginning, Venkat Srinivasan, uh, who runs our NCBS archives, was the person who helped us find all this primary documentation and put together uh, many slides for this, uh, for this talk. I think yeah. it's very important that we have all this recorded. I think so too. I, I think it, it's it's great that you did record it, and it's great that you could also find it after <laughs> after all this time. Um, so the Simon Center has now been around for I guess about thirty years, and um, you quickly alluded to evaluation. But I'm wondering that um, when it does come time for evaluation, whether this is at the level of the of, of programs or at the level of individual group leaders, um, yeah. what are what's actually being what are the criteria? What's being looked at for for success? Yeah, so, so to clarify, NCBS uh, has been around for, for 30 years. The Simon Center is a sort of virtual activity within NCBS, uh, which has been around for about seven or eight, uh, ah, okay. or eight years. Got it. Uh, and uh, so the question you ask is a very important one. It's one that we ask ourselves. Uh, what does it mean to say we've been successful? Does it just mean we've been publishing lots of nice papers and, and having fun? Uh, and the answer, of course, is no. Um, and this question uh, pushes us to um, uh, the, the following answer. And uh, this is an answer I think will... Uh, I think Madan would agree with and, and other colleagues at the Simon Center. We would like to show a new way of finding an interface between physics, computer science, and biology. We like, we'd like to show that not just by talking about it abstractly, but by doing work in this very difficult interface and by showing how that engagement drives new biology. That's a very hard ask. Right? So, so, so theory is often published, nice papers, and then it gets relegated and, and it doesn't stick 
anymore. But uh, for example, Madden's talk shows that ideas brought forward by theory go back into the lab. They're tested with very sophisticated experiments and change the way we think about how cells um, work in this, in this particular example. So we would like to uh, develop a new culture of theory. And you know, so it's a very ambitious goal. And that new culture we hope comes from within NCBS because I think uniquely compared to institutions around the world, this is one place where the experimentalists caused the nucleation of the theory program. And so I think it is really uh, because of that, our impact should be measured by the impact on biology as a whole, not on theoretical biology. Great, thanks. Um, so you, I, 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 don't know, I don't know if this may be a difficult question, but I wanna dive deeper a little bit into the culture. You mentioned um, that you, know, you find the atmosphere to be very special, very amazing at NCBS and certainly within the Simon Center. Um, and of course, this is in large part due to the engagement between the theorists and the exper experimentalists. But I'm wondering if you can elaborate on sort of what is it about the culture or the campus or the environment that really fosters um, and supports and encourages these collaborative interactions so that people don't return to their silos of theory or just experiment. Yeah, so, so I'll be honest, the pressure to break into silos is constant. Sure. Okay. Uh, when NCBS started, it was in a small building, uh, which you saw an image of, uh, and uh, it was just a, a small, you know, that, that standard cliche, a scrappy group of biologists making a go of it. Right? And I think at that time, the culture got set, which was the sense of uh, just collaboration and adventurousness. But now we are a big institution. In fact, we are one institution on a campus of three different institutions, NCBS, the Stem Cell Institute, and a place called the Center for Cellular and Molecular Platforms. Um, and I think we are uh, constantly living on the edge of going to a more traditional way of working. And for me, it's the institutional memory of, you know, Obeid's ideas, the first few years at NCBS, constantly looking back in order to look forward that keeps everything together. Um, and uh, if, 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 if that culture vanishes, and it could always vanish, uh, then I think it would be a huge tragedy. Um, and I hope it doesn't happen. Thank you. So there's a, um, there's a question from audience member Rolando Gonzalez Jose, and I'm going to read it I'm in the interest of time. If, if conservation biology, including anthropogenic effects, is one of the developing fields at NCBS, are you planning to include social scientists like sociologists and anthropologists at NCBS in the future? Yeah, so this is a wonderful question. Um, NCBS and TIFR, in fact, are not, uh, are not universities in, in the traditional sense, right? So we, we are a technical research institution uh, and therefore narrow in our scope. But this is exactly the direction that a place like NCBS would grow. Because biology is so central to all of human life now, and there's no need for me to explain why in the period that we're living through, um, we need to have people like this embedded on our campus. And we, we have efforts on this line. So for example, the archives I mentioned are not an archive of NCBS. It's a, an archive of biology in India, which is a resource for social scientists to use and search and collaborate with. Uh, we have many programs uh, which bring uh, uh, social scientists, uh, in fact, artists, uh, theater practitioners and so on to the campus. Um, and uh, you know, in future, maybe if it's possible to have these things linked in terms of our research enterprise, I think that would be great fun, but it has to be managed very carefully. Wonderful, thank you. Um, so with that, I think we're going to um, close out today. I just want to end by thanking you, um, Mukund and Madan, very much for your fantastic talks today. We really enjoyed them. Um, I want to thank the audience for joining us. And again, I encourage you to head over to Slack. Both Mukund and Madan promised me that they would go over there and answer any um, questions that you have or engage in some conversation. Um, I also want to encourage everyone to join us again next week. Um, life Science Across the Globe will return to the Center for Life Sciences in Beijing with talks from Yu Long Li and Hang Wei Wang. So we look forward to seeing you here again next Wednesday. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.